Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm just gonna do a little May TBR. May May is when the weather starts to heat up. I feel like my reading has been going really strong this year so far and I want to continue that. However, I want to shift my focus away from like shorter books that are like easier to read through to like more dense sink your teeth into fantasy because that's just like really what I have been craving. So I have tailored this TBR towards that feeling. I've also tried to make it realistic. I tend to split my reading between three different formats. I will listen to an audiobook on my commute, doing chores, walking. I like to read ebooks either like late at night when I'm just laying in bed and I cannot be bothered to have the lights on and I just want something really easy on my eyes or I like to read on an ebook at lunch because it's really easy for me to transport back and forth from work. And then the third thing, of course, is a physical book. So I kind of can sometimes have three different formats going at once. Or if I choose not to overlap them, then I, you know, at least know that I have each of these formats that I tend to just bounce back and forth in between. Let's talk about the audiobooks that I'm interested in reading this month. I started the audiobooks for Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead in February, and so far I have read the first three, and now I would like to continue on with the series. I was going to continue on with them in April, and then a hold came through for a very exciting series that I will talk about in my April wrap-up, which should be up next week, but I put these aside for the moment, but I will be getting back to them. Vampire Academy takes place in the world where there are Maroi vampires. They are mortal, and yes, they drink blood, but they only use their magic for good. They do not even use it in self-defense. Thus, they need guardians, which are Danthir, half human, half vampire, and they're the ones that are trained to protect the Maroi from the Strigoi, which are basically like the immortal evil vampires with bloodlust and no morals. So in this first book, we follow best friends Rose Hathaway and Lissa Dragomir. They have been on the run. They escaped their school, St. Vladimir's Academy, two years ago, and now they have finally been captured and brought back. There is something lurking inside St. Vladimir's that drove Lissa and Rose to run away in the first place, and now it will be catching back up with them. This book came out in 2007 and it is such like classic YA vibes. This is actually my friend Taz's copy. I will have to give it back to her because I did end up reading the audiobooks instead of the physical books, but I'm having so much fun with this reread. The book that I'm up to is number four, which is Blood Promise. And then there's book number five, which is Spirit Bound. So I would like to at least get to those two audiobooks this month and then potentially get to the last book, the sixth book in the series, which is Last Sacrifice. And that will just depend on like if my holds come through or, you know, the timing of the Libby app. Another series that I'm really interested in checking out on audio is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I feel like I tend to read anything that is YA and not fantasy, so any kind of YA contemporary type thing on audiobook for some reason. I tend to just really enjoy them that way. And I have been leaning towards YA mystery thrillers and this one I feel like has a lot of buzz so I wanted to check it out and the hold line is definitely long so I know it's popular. All Avery plans for is to survive high school, get a scholarship, and get out. But all of that changes when billionaire Tobias dies and leaves her his fortune. But Avery has no idea why or even who he is. To receive her inheritance, Avery must move into Hawthorne House where the old man's love of puzzles, riddles, and codes are throughout the entire estate. The unfortunate bit of that is that the Hawthorne family that Tobias dispossessed is also living there. This includes the four Hawthorne grandsons who are convinced this is just some game made up by their grandpa. And now Avery is drawn into this world of twisting mysteries and puzzles. I mean, billionaire, inheritance, four grandsons, weird house that you have to move into. It just sounds like a party. <laughs> and it seems like it's gonna be really intriguing and a very good book to pick up on audio. Next, I'm gonna focus on my NetGalley TBR because I'm a little bit behind on it. So these are 
eARCs that I've been approved for that I need to leave a review to have my net galley ratio still be looking good. It's it's dropped a bit, so I'm gonna keep putting these books on my TBR in hopes that I read them and review them and get my net galley ratio up. But fortunately, I am trying to be more picky about the books that I request. That way, I only end up with arcs of books that I really want to read. So. I'm going to put two of these books on my TBR for this month and this will probably be what I read on my e-reader at work and at random times when I don't feel like looking at a physical book. The first of these books being Business or Pleasure by Rachel Lynn Solomon. Chandler is a ghost writer and when she goes to the signing for the book that she ghost wrote, the author doesn't even recognize her. That leads her to meeting a mysterious man at a bar and having the most awkward one night stand ever. Chandler's next project is ghostwriting for a C-list actor named Finn whose claim to fame is being on a teen werewolf drama and now he makes his living appearing at fan conventions. However, Chandler knows him from their awkward one night stand. Chandler's determined to keep her cool and play it professional, but when she lets Finn know that their one night stand wasn't as mind blowing as he thought it was, he is distraught. So they strike a deal. When Chandler is not working on his novel, she will teach him in the ways of satisfaction. And they must figure out what's more important, business or pleasure. Okay, this one sounds so fun. I read Weather Girl by this author and I love that one. I adored it. It was so cute and hopefully I get all those fuzzy warm feelings from this one as well. The next e-arc that I will be reading in the month of May is The Fraud Squad by Kylo Zhao. And this author is actually been popping up on my For You page on TikTok because she makes TikToks about socialites and all that stuff. So it's super fun and I'm like, I definitely should read her book. I have an e-arc of it and I love things that are like socialites, scandals, glitz and glam. Samantha Song's lifelong dream is to write for a high society magazine and she'll do anything to get there. However, Samantha works at a drab PR firm and she only lives the glitz and glam life vicariously through her co-worker Anya Chen. Then she meets Timothy Kingston, the disillusioned son of one of Singapore's most elite families. To Samantha's surprise, both Anya and Timothy agree to help Anya make her name in high socialite society. But the deeper Samantha weighs into the fraud, the more scared she is that she will be exposed. I mean, Fraud Squad, that's a great name. A high society, infiltrating. It just sounds amazing. Okay, and now on to physical books. I am trying to kind of temper myself this month and leave a lot of wiggle room to pick up random things as the mood strikes while still having a TBR. So I'm only putting three physical books on this TBR, but the things I'm trying to focus on are arcs that I have received and my piles and piles of unread books. Like I have not really picked up anything from this bookshelf in a while and I think it is in part because this room is not done yet. So I'm really gonna also try and focus on getting this room ready. I need to hang some lights, I need to get a new shelf and I need to get a chair. If you have like a amazing reading chair recommendation, also drop it down below. So I feel like once I make this room my oasis, I will read in it more, I'll look at my books more and hopefully I'll read more off my shelf. The first physical book that I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely want to get to this month. A Crown of Ivy and Glass by Claire Legrand. You guys know Furyborn, it's right here above me, it is one of my all-time favorite books. That trilogy is just so brilliant, amazing, like emotional. It's everything to me. I've read it since the, the first book came out. Like I love Furyborn and so when I heard that Claire Legrand was writing a new fantasy romance book but now it is aged up to adults I just knew it was going to be everything it was going to be brilliant and I I need it right now so it is coming out in May I probably will wait until I get the finished physical copy because I want to annotate it and then like save this for my collection obviously still get my review in because I was kindly sent this Lady Gemma Ashbourne seemingly has it all. She's young, gorgeous, rich, and her family is anointed, which means blessed by the gods, but inside she's deeply, deeply sad as her family has been torn apart by tragedies. Worst of all, Gemma is the only one in her family without magical abilities and her body fights it off like a poison and she is constantly ill 
and very lonely and just yearning for love. Then she meets Talon Diastir and he's the only one left of a family that destroyed themselves when they made a bargain with the demon. Gemma is intrigued and enchanted by him and so she strikes a deal. She will help him infiltrate high society if he helps her destroy a rival family to her own. And to do this, they need to destroy a demon known as the Man with the Three-Eyed Crown, which is apparently behind the blood feud. This is such a cool setup, a new trilogy from Claire Legrand. I just know it's probably going to be so amazing, and I'm so, so, so excited to read this. The next book on my TBR is Violet Made of Thorns by Gina Chen. This is a book that I picked up last summer read a teensy bit of and put down because I just was not in the mood for YA fantasy but I liked what I had read so far and I feel bad. I need to come back to her. And the tagline is Kings and Curses, Girls and Gods, These Are the Making of Tales. Gorgeous. Violet is a prophet and a liar and she manipulates the royal court with prophecies that may or may not always be true. Prince Cyrus detests her and plans to strip her of her title once he is crowned which Violet cannot let happen. So the king asks Violet to prophesize a love for Cyrus's upcoming ball and she accidentally awakens a deadened curse. This curse will affect the fate of the entire kingdom all depending on who the prince chooses for a bride. Violet then faces her own choice. She can either defy her destiny and carve out her own life path or she can give in to the ill-fated attraction that has been brewing between her and the prince. I love like the trickery. I love that she's a prophet that lies. I think that's so fun. I necessarily have not seen that before in a book and I think this is going to be good. From what I remember, I was really intrigued with the beginning of it. I just didn't keep reading because of life, but I'm, I'm ready for this book again. And then the last book I have on the TBR for this month is Small Favors by Erin A. Craig. I was just thinking, I was like, I am really craving like a fantasy horror book and Erin A. Craig, she knows how to do that. House of Salt and Sorrows, one of my favorite reads when I read it and um, there's a sequel coming out so I think I'm gonna need to reread that book because I loved it so much. So I definitely love horror and I'm not like super super into the genre yet. I definitely really also like like the gothic horror fantasy intersection and I think that this is going to deliver. And it says enter not the forest deep beyond the bells the dark friends keep. Ooh. Apparently I left tabs in here because I guess I was going to read it. <laughs> um, it definitely has something to do with bees because there's like bees all over. Bees are scary. You know if you have a fear of bees it's called Melissa phobia and I have a friend named Melissa who is afraid of bees. So she is Melissa with Melissa phobia. Anyways, side fun fact aside. Hillary is waiting for something to happen in her life. She lives in an isolated town that is surrounded by mountains. She spends her days tending to her family's beehives while her twin, Samuel, is free to roam as he pleases. Early settlers fought off monsters in the woods and the myths and legends from that time keep Ellery's family and their neighbors from venturing too far away from the town. But when some townsfolk go missing on a supply run, unease falls over the entire town. Strange activities plague the town and then it is revealed that the creatures are actually real and they are offering to fulfill the residents' deepest desires in return for one small favor. And Ellery must stop it all. This sounds so good. So fun. I think this is also going to be a fun book for like May because it's it's got like the flower and bee vibe but also horror. I love the a juxtaposition of like this sunny cover, like pretty flower cover and it's horror. I love that so very excited. I have had that book for a while and I really wanted to read it and I haven't yet so I think now's the time. All right, let me know what you guys are going to read in May. Leave a little honeybee emoji if you have watched this far in honor of small favors. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because that really helps my channel and have some fun reads and books and I'll catch you guys in the next one.